Hey YouTube, um, just want to talk about valve adjustments and um, I'm going to do mine here in the next month but I just wanted to do like a three-part series on valve adjustment and like an oil change you know service. The first part will be this video so I'm just going to explain why you should do a valve adjustment. So the problem you have is if you don't do these, you can run into issues with cooling and wear on your heads. Uh, I come from the sport bike community and um, I'm pretty sure almost every single sport bike requires a valve adjustment. And when I used to ride in my big packs of people, I'd ask around, you know, when did you do your last valve adjustment? And usually the answer is never. And that's not a good thing. And I wouldn't want to own a uh, bike with 20,000 miles that has never had a valve adjustment. It just shows neglect on the engine and it's not that hard to do. So either pay someone to do it and get it done right or figure out how to do it one way or another. You now have, congratulations, a $30,000 engine in there. So um, treat it right so it lasts a long time. Um, I'm going to show you mechanically what this looks like and, um, and what happens, specifically what happens if the valves are either too tight or too loose. That'll be this part. The second part will be the preparation and materials needed to do a valve adjustment and oil change. It's good to do them at the same time. I usually do spark plugs also. So that will be, uh, the prep will be part two and me actually doing it will be part three. Don't hold me to a time on this. Give me like a month because I'll film it. I got to find the right, you know, the right time. You know, you got to feel just up for this and you got to have a good day of, uh, you know nothing to do so you do it right you don't want to rush it like i said the engines are expensive don't make a mistake do it when you're up for it um okay so i'm going to run into my computer i'm going to show you kind of what this looks like there's a page i found on a honda site and it has some good pictures on it so i'm going to show you that now and uh stay tuned one second okay so this is a honda engine and uh, Honda use a sim similar system to us. So just pictured, it's really exactly how we do ours. Um, and I'll show you mine when I get in there, but I like this illustration. So you basically have the, the valve stem here. This is the feeler gauge. Ours is 0.1 millimeter. This is the rocker arm, which is here. And there's a nut here and then an adjusting screw. So loosening and tighten this one, adjust your clearance, and then this locks it down, 10 millimeter. Okay, so here's another illustration. This is on the Grassroots Motorsports webpage. So we have this one, okay, with an adjustable uh, clearance here, with this screw adjustable clearance. It's a good thing we don't have this one. I've had many motorcycles that had this one with this, this is shim under bucket, where you actually, sometimes you have to take the cam out and then do calculations. You have to measure it and then use a shim that goes under here, a hardened shim to set your, uh, your clearance. Well, anyway, we don't have to worry about that. Um, we have one where we could do everything ourselves with tools and a feeler gauge. It may not be the easiest thing to get to, but it could be done. There's a few, to, a few, a few tools that uh, I'll go over with in the prep guide, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So this would be a representation of our uh, air-cooled Porsche engine, Carrier 3.2s, and uh, pretty much earlier. Um, and the reason why you want to do these, you'll hear the terms loose and tight. My valves are tight, my valves are loose, and that, or they're noisy, right? Oh, I got a clickety-clack valve train or whatever. Well, a lot of it's because this clearance here is off, 
So the reason why you want to do that, especially when you hear noise, is if they say this is loose, the rocker arm here will have more clearance this way. It'll move. So if you move it up, you could have much more than the 0.1 millimeter clearance that is in spec here. So if this is higher, it means there's no nothing to stop this spring from snapping the valve into the seat, right? This is supposed to slow that down. If, if this is up, you're losing lift, so you're losing power. So this, if this is higher up, your valve isn't going to go down as far as it can to let the you know, either the intake in or the exhaust out. So that's one reason you want to have it in the spec. And then the second one is you don't want that, that spring here pushing this back in, eroding your valve seat. So that would be if it's loose, which means, as I said, this would be clickety-clack. And I'll show you when I do mine. You could kind of give them a little rock and you'll know. You have to get used to that by feel, but you would measure it too. But before I measure it, I can just grab this and go like that, and then you'll know kind of where you're sitting. If it doesn't move, it means it's tight. And that would be the other condition that would be out of spec. So tight would mean that there's no clearance here. So when the valve comes up, this would be, the rocker arm would be kind of too far down, which the effect would be the valve isn't going to seat. So the tighter it is, the further the valve will be down in the combustion chamber, which causes it to not seal. Okay. And on the intake side, that would be, you know, loss of power. But on our engines, they are, wait for it, air-cooled. So we have what would be considered extreme head temperatures because of that compared to a water-cooled engine. And this, this applies to motorcycles, uh, air-cooled, you know, vintage air-cooled motorcycles, Harley-Davidson's, always the exhaust valve is much, much hotter than the intake valve. So if this is, so this is, would be the intake, your charge of fuel and air are always cooling this valve okay when the exhaust valve opens and closes so just say this is the exhaust valve there's nothing cooling this valve except when it actually makes contact with the head in the valve seat it will distribute heat into the head and that's where your Oil will carry the heat away. The fan on our engines will cool, will carry the heat away. Um, you know, a motorcycle, if you notice, like a four cylinder motorcycle air cooled, the air will carry that away. So if this is tight and the valve is stays down in here, doesn't seal, well, that valve is staying out in the combustion chamber and it'll start to heat up hotter and hotter and hotter because it's not making contact to, to basically uh, carry the heat into the head. So that's why the exhaust valves usually are in a worse spec when you check your valves than your, your intake valves because the environment in which those valves live is much, much, much uh, more challenging than an intake valve. So, that's kind of the why you want to do that. So then I will follow up with some videos on what do you need. Prepare, right? Because I will do the oil change at the same time. It's a two-day process. And then uh, prepare everything before day one. And then I'll go through actually doing it. So stay tuned for those, and hopefully you find this video helpful. If uh, there's anything I missed, leave it down in the comment section below, and uh, always good to increase the body of knowledge with Porsche ownership. Thanks, and take care. Bye.